Good morning, everybody. SoCal Saber here and uh, Bill Thornton, and I think I, uh, I don't know what I was thinking. Never mind. I hope everybody had a nice weekend. This is a Monday morning for me, and it's getting kind of windy here as we supposedly got a storm coming in here to the west from the Pacific, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I hope everybody's been safe back there in the east and Midwest with all of the storms and tornadoes, so my wishes go with all of you. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing of a game that I have had for a long, long time, and I've never put it on the table. And the other night I was watching a video, I came across the video on it, and I said, why not? Let's get this thing going. So here we go. We're going to go be unboxing Field Commander Napoleon. Let's go down and take a look. Okay, Field Commander Napoleon, this is a big, big, heavy box. It's just one of those three inches, and it feels like it is really full. This is a uh, Napoleonic Solitaire Strategy Game, designed by Dan Verson, published by DVG Games. <clears throat> so let's uh, get this shrink wrap off so you can, we can prohibit any glare, and then we'll take a look at the back before we open it up. lot better. <clears throat> okay, copyrighted in 2011, so I'm not sure if that's when it was published or republished, pre-printed or not, but <clears throat> here we go. See how big thick this is? And when I tip it over, nothing even falls. <laughs> that's crazy. All right, it gives a little bit of history of Napoleon himself and where, when, where he was born and everything, and then it says, Field Commander Napoleon includes 11 historical campaigns, 1796, 1798, 1800, 1805, 1806, 07, 09, 1812, 1813, 1814, and 100 days in 1815. <clears throat> it says, each campaign features a unique set of infantry and cavalry counters with combat values accurate for that campaign. In each campaign, you will move your army and engage in detailed battles. Replayability is very, very good. It says Field, I, I just skipped a lot of the stuff in there. Field Commander Napoleon is a solitaire game. You're placed in command of Napoleon's forces and make historically accurate decisions, while the built-in game system controls the opposing forces. This means you can play the game at your own pace, wherever, whenever, and wherever you choose. All right, it says it's a one-player game, 90 minutes per campaign, and low to moderate in complexity. All right, let's take a look inside of here. If I can get the box off, the lid off. This is a tight one, too. My goodness. Here we go. Right off the top, we got something that's blank here. Oh, it feels like it could be some styrofoam to protection. Yep. Oh no, it's cardboard. It was in there to protect the stuff in the box. Very nice I idea. <coughs> got the rule book, which we'll take a look at in a little bit. You know, we'll, I'll thumb through this in a little bit for you. Then. We have, uh, I guess they're, they're feel sturdy. They're uh, like eight and a half by eleven, uh, glossy, you know, thin cardstock. But I, don't, I believe they'll do the job. And this looks like the, the, from what I've seen, this is like the main one for the campaign. And it's got the sequence of play on it, the battle turn sequence, and everything on here to help you through there. <coughs> then we got the. This is pretty standard with DVG games. We got the uh, campaign and campaign note sheet, date of victory, victory points, and that one in here. I'm going and reproduce this a few times. Then we got the battle board. This is where, we'll, when the battle is going to occur, we will take them off of that off the main board, put them on the battle board, and then. We'll do it. Down here are different types of, uh, geez, campaign, or I don't know. See, I forget the word now. My goodness gracious, Bill. 
anyway these are for the enemies and these four are standard and they're standard if you don't have the other other kind of uh, I'm sorry I can't forget what the heck the name or maybe I'll remember as we're going along <laughs> boy I just watched the video on this last night too that's why I dug this out then we have the main board one of the main boards I think I think there's 11 of them in here and this is a uh, 1814 and the hundred days war yeah and it's got the setup on there for 1814 and 1815 resupply sequence of play and the track turns okay get that out I wanted to take one more look at this maybe if I can remember what the heck I was talking about battle plans that was those a lot in there are the standard battle plans unless you don't have the there's other counters in the game that allow you to pick and it's different battle plans and so forth <clears throat> but that's what the word i was trying to share all right boy we got a lot of boards here and here's the uh the russian campaign i have to do a, have a little book action with these they've been in the box a long time Special rules up here. Digging down. It's pretty cool that there's a separate board for every one of these and different things on them, resupplies and setups and so forth. And this is the uh, the Italian campaign. this box is so heavy and then uh, the third coalition in the Danube campaign as you see the maps are all different parts of Europe <clears throat> this around Vienna Osterberg Freebird I'm not a real good history buff when it comes to Napoleon so you might start looking for a little things to <clears throat> learn a little bit more about him this is the uh, Prussian campaign. This is the one I think was that they were playing on the video I well, last night. It's got Berlin, Munich, Prague, Warsaw. And here, this is the Peninsula campaign. If I can recognize any of them, Toledo, but this I'm sure not Ohio, <laughs> of Barcelona. So we're down here towards Spain. Spain. <clears throat> and this is the Egyptian campaign. Alexandria over here on the left and the east. And Gaza. That looks like we got all the campaigns there. Then the counters. At least this when I punch, start punching this one out, it's going to be a little bit easier. This is these counters are shaped like uh, they're nice and rounded out. They're round the corners too. They're they're nice and big, kind of like the counters you would get in Fleet Commander Nimitz big so not they're gonna be hard to supply and then uh they got the years on them for the different campaigns up probably so i'm gonna sort them as i as i punch them out for the different by the different years <clears throat> i didn't do that at first with fleet commander nimitz and then i found i had a real mess and then i found out differently so and then they're back some of the units infantry units are double-sided they can take who two hits cavalry units they're done. Like here's an infantry unit here. When he's flipped over, it goes from 6-5 to 4-3. And here's a cavalry unit here. When he's flipped over in the back, he's gone. He's eliminated. 
didn't learn that much in the video. I don't see nothing in the video that I haven't, any mechanics I haven't ran across before. Yeah, and then here's 1800, 1798, 1800. Then we got 1805. Oh, this whole thing is eight, and there's one 719, 17, two 1798s, and then the rest of them are 1805. We got some different, these are supply markers, I believe. Then the battle marker, battle turn. <clears throat> we put it on the battle turn track. <clears throat> then you take one marker and you put it up on the main one to remember what country the battle was taking place in. 1805, 1809, different colors. I like that, that also. I'm taking that the blue, the red, blue, and white and blue are the, the French. Just guessing that now. <laughs> so don't hold me to it. I will be learning this and I will be playing the campaign. And one of the guys said that they really liked the uh, the camp the war games statuses. So when I do a campaign, I will uh, I'll walk you through one, an easier one that's not going to take five hours to get through. And uh, <clears throat> then I'll give you some updates as I start other campaigns as I'm learning this. Lots of counters. I'm going to get my counter, extra counter trays or something out for this. I'm going to have some kind of room. I'm going to have room for cases because I had, these will be gone plus the cardboard on the top that was protecting it will be gone. More and more. Got scouts. I don't know what they're for. Now we got to look at the British here. That looks like a British flag. I guess they did come across the channel to fight Napoleon once or twice in their history. Say, so I don't know anything about Napoleon's history. Here's battle plans and so forth. Let's see what the look on the other side a little clearer. Yeah. It just says officers, all enemies. If you have this battle plan, get plus three on their activation roll. And we're gonna show what the activation roll is. See the uh, the five down here? That's his supply w weapon. But no, this the six is his initiative number. And they have to roll equal to or lower than that to uh, activate that unit. And then of course the units are gonna be depending on their strength, whether they're coming up in column, whether they're coming up in line. Interesting stuff in that mechanics. Some more uh, battle plans. And then look, looks like the last one. <clears throat> oh yeah, we got some uh, tanks and some garrisons. Garrisons and we got uh, recruit, tank recruitments for recruiting. Got some fortifications for the British and some garrisons for them also. So I have to see how that plays out. <clears throat> I saw them on the board the guy was playing last night, but I wasn't too sure about that. All right, last but not least, let's take a look at uh, <clears throat> the rule book. Nice glossy paper in color. <clears throat> and we got, uh, talk about the introduction, Napoleon, some history on him, and then we got the campaigns and the end of a campaign. Then we got components over here, seven maps, battlefield sheet, help sheets with, uh, you know, <clears throat> the text and the text is readable and you move my one bad eye and more about the counters, and the force counters. Okay. Front and back of the counters, so we're on we're on page five already. We haven't started the the play yet. <clears throat> and then we're going to, we're starting set up on six. Starting forces, the objectives, and then we're going to go to sequence of play in the French turn. So this looks like the 
the game rules actually start on page the second second part of page seven. And we go through, and it's typical, pretty typical uh, DVG book. They walk you through the steps, explain things for you. Yeah, those are ones that will look like this. There were insight counters. And I think you can only get them if Napoleon's in the in the battle. And we're gonna go, so we started on seven. The last page is twenty-one, but it's the last page is all about credits and add link campaigns, solitaire decisions, next turn it ends on twenty. So we're still looking maybe thirteen pages at most. Of rules, not too bad. <coughs> Post battles and enemy turns. All right, so there we have our first look at the components in the books, the boards, and the rule book of Field Commander Napoleon. Go down there and hit that like button. Come on, gang, let's get this channel growing. I really appreciate all of your support. You know, subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And uh, push it out on your social media channels. Maybe somebody hasn't taken a look at this game yet. It's been a while, 10 years since it's been out. So, thank you very much for coming by. And this is SoCal Saber saying, until you see me again or hear from me, take care of yourselves, be kind to each other, and stay safe.